Today on 2D's Track Analysis, we have the track of the day for January 19th, Kori no Awa by Maji. Kori no Awa is a full speed track with the surfaces road and plastic, and it also contains the special block turbo boost. As far as the difficulty, I found the tracks to be on par with an average track of the day track, though I found one section to be quite strange and hard to drive consistently. I finished with a time of 50.971, which was 3 seconds ahead of the gold medal time, but 7 tenths behind the author medal time of 50.221. Overall, I didn't really enjoy the track. The first half is okay with a few small turns and one long speed slide. After that, I felt the wall rise with plastic exits felt awkward, found one full section that overall just didn't feel good to drive, and there was a questionable checkpoint placement mid wall ride and overall bad standing respawns. So, on the plus minus rating scale, I give Kori no Awa a minus rating. For the analysis today, we'll be comparing my best lap with the world record at the time, who was Vixa.wp with a 48.395. So, there's not going to be a huge difference at the start, but the world record does take a better inside line there, so they do pull ahead a little bit. Pretty much even at the first checkpoint as far as speed goes, but here for this upcoming jump, we both get a pretty bouncy landing, but the world record does get a little less bounce, so they pull ahead a little bit. And by the time we get to this next upcoming checkpoint, we'll be 11 speed behind, and I feel like that's mostly due to this little speed slide they get right at this location on the down slope of that ramp. And moving forward a little bit, we'll see that the world record also speed slides this spot. Uh, despite it looking like these are my tires speed sliding, these are the world record skid marks. But yeah, I do not uh, get this speed slide going down to the right here. And after this section, I do pull off a pretty nice speed slide through this long turn here and end up being at this checkpoint still only 11 speeds behind. So but staying even with the world record here. But upon landing on the other side, I don't get the best speed slide on this part. And into this jump here, we can see the world record and I taking slightly different lines with the world record taking a much lower approach and to the left hand side of that jump as well. This different entrance and a very sloppy exit from myself results in us being 42 speed behind at this checkpoint right here. So overall during that section we lost 31 extra speed. For this next wall ride though, me and the world record take pretty similar lines until the exit where you can see the world record takes a higher line here. For this exit and the previous exit, you really want to be up as high as you can and take more of a downward angle approach. Here I am kind of sideways and on the plastic landing that will cause you to keep sliding sideways and give you a poor exit onto the road. And you see this exit here makes me slide to the right hand side a little bit and my back tires start sliding out here, causing me to lose even more speed. At this upcoming checkpoint, the black half circle there, I will lose another 18 speed and now we're 60 speed behind. Lucky for me, I pull off a decent speed slide thereafter and into the next checkpoint, I only lose two extra speed here, now being down just 62. And for the upcoming section after this loop, I really don't have a ton of advice for you. I was so inconsistent in this spot, uh, a lot of the times I would fly to the upper right, just go completely off the track. You know, sometimes I would be too low to the left and hit the plastic and not be able to continue, which is another point of emphasis for this location. For whatever reason, a few blocks in front of us here, there is a checkpoint and you cannot standing respawn at it because obviously you would just fall straight down and not be able to make the jump. So the standing respawn puts you eight to nine seconds behind way back before even the first loop part of this started. And then if you get back to this spot and you mess up again, well, guess what? You're another eight to nine seconds behind yet again. It's really just a disastrous checkpoint placement and one that really just doesn't belong. So again, my best advice for this is really just watch the GPS, try to replicate what it does. But uh, really, uh, this point right here, I uh, just did not care for. Even with a completely different exit than the world record, we really don't lose anything else besides this last speed slide right here, which takes the world record a little further ahead. Typically, I'm a full speed enjoyer, and it's really my favorite track style, but today's track just wasn't all that enjoyable for me. I can't imagine anyone who had to use a standing respawn found this track all that enjoyable either, as most of them felt like a last second addition with not much thought on them. Walls and very sharp turns right in front of them and others putting you extremely far behind due to bad placement of the respawn itself or bad checkpoint locations. I know if I had to use them more often, I would have definitely given the track a worse rating. 
I'll leave it at that though. If you enjoyed today's analysis, please like the video and subscribe. And if interested, I have links to my Twitch and Discord in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for the next track analysis.